my god, this is so weird. <sighs> I doubt anyone is awake by this time. If you're awake, if you're up, if you're seeing this live, say hi. <sighs> I'm just going to wait maybe one minute before I delve in. Good morning. Good morning. It's morning here. And I know that I did not plan this life. <laughs> I didn't even announce it. See, the circumstances is a lot, is a lot, but I just wanted to put it out tonight. Anyway, let me just get things ready before we start. Hi, hi, hi welcome to the live hello mary hello good morning where are you watching me from <laughs> hi <laughs> i know i didn't announce this live but ah 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 see i'm pained i'm pained deep down you guys won't understand you guys will not understand. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, the tsunami is here. Everybody is coming in now. There are 62 of you watching. Hello, Adesola, Ashley, Falakemi, Jonathan. Jonathan, hello. Chinonso, Angela. See, eh? mm, my dilemma this, this early moment, it's 3.30 a.m., guys. This video, I was meant to film this video since 12 midnight. My camera, my only camera that I've been using to do my sit down video. Just look at what happened. And my husband has gone to work. The only thing that I usually used to see myself with, it just broke. And I've had this camera for, it's getting to almost five years now. I've used this camera. Like I'm so, like the way I'm just, <sighs> I was contemplating should I, I i just got tired after the makeup after everything ready and then this happened so it's like my morale has just been down i was like should i film this q and a you guys already sent in your questions and all so i don't know this one i, I almost cried <laughs> You guys know how I use things. See, eh? There are some of my gadgets that have lasted more than the people in my life. <laughs> that is how much I cherish, you know, things like this. I don't, I don't like waste. But look at this camera I've used for years now. It just gave up on me this night. So all the sit-down videos I've planned for this month, I don't even know. Even the the I said the devil is after me this year. When I say people don't understand, the devil is after me and this my content creation, my family, everything. But the spirit of perseverance and proactiveness told me, nah, you can't just cry and sleep. Just still do the Q&A. And then I tried doing this live since 2 a.m. <sighs> Network, is your limit? Please say hi if, if Wi-Fi is disturbing in your area. I'm seeing Nigerians complaining. Everybody is complaining. Network issues. The thing don't reach Saudi Arabia. Like for two hours, I've been trying to do this live video. So I just had to use uh, my phone data and transferred all the questions to my email. So I'm going to be reading out the questions from my PC. <sighs> I don't even want to talk about what I've been through this morning. It's many small, let me cry. But I cannot give up and I cannot cry. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, welcome to the Q&A. This is, anyway, if you're seeing me for the first time, my name is Dina Ikuweme. Instead of a sit-down video, I will be doing a live question and answer session with you guys. Um, the good thing with this live um, video is even after I'm done answering everything here, you guys can still ask me if you feel like you have any question obviously don't enter deep deep just ask me questions that you're you've been meaning to um you know get answers <clears throat> so yeah do we start the q a are you guys ready can you put your phone horizontally Ooh. like this it's telling me orientation is locked i have to keep it like this 
like this. It's not it's not allowing me. Oh. It's not allowing me. YouTube is not allowing me. It's telling me something about orientation is being locked. Something, something. So please bear with me keeping it this way. But yeah, do we start? Are you guys ready? Let's delve into this Q1. A. Eh? Thank you so much, Elonja Moore. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Someone said good night from USA. It's 8.33 p.m. It is 3.34 a.m. here. I should be sleeping. But then all the things I explained, that's what I'm going through. No, leave it. We go need bend our neck to be there. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Just it's it's not a vlog, so you can even just keep your phone anywhere and you'll be able to hear me. But yeah, let's delve in. Let's delve into the Q and A. These are some of the questions you guys sent in via Instagram and via the community area on YouTube. The first question I'll be answering here is from BB Fonzi. Do they give resident permit and passports there? Um, I think I've done a video on this. They don't give passports here. If you stay in the Middle East, not just Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman, wherever in the Middle East you like, stay 20 years, 30 years, carry your coffin, keep somewhere, no passport for you. <laughs> The highest you'd get is probably the resident permit, the ikama. That's what it's called here. Um, that allows you to stay, to work, to leave and enter. Yeah, that's the only thing you're given here. Aside from that, there is no citizenship prospect here, unfortunately. The next question is, what's the best thing motherhood has taught you about yourself? Hmm. This is by parent scoop. What motherhood has taught me about myself? Motherhood has definitely taught me to be patient. Like, I don't think all my life, I just, I, I've never had patience for a lot of things. Like, if I look at myself in the past and look at me now, I, I never used to be a, if I see kids and I'm like, you know, trying to be all... Mm, Someone like my sister, my elder sister, she used to be a children-loving girl, right, from our teenage years, all of that. Me, if I see kids, day your day, let me day my day. I don't have the time. I don't have the strength. I've never been that sort of, okay, let me, I'm drawn to kids or I'm drawn to children, never. But then, yeah, being a mom, <laughs> it has unlocked a different type of patience in me that I never knew existed. Um, it has made me strive for something. Definitely, when I was young, like, all the motivation I had was just to maybe do things to take that I've done it or because my peers are doing it or because, you know, there's some sort of pressure somewhere. Maybe my parents have told me that this is the right thing to do. But now nobody needs to tell me that you need to get your ass up and do things. Like no one tells you where the motivation comes from. No one tells you why you do the things you do because the kids are here. They have to be looked after. They are your responsibility now. So you just have to develop some sort of motivation, some sort of responsibility, some sort of discipline. All these things, I don't know what English to use and wrap all these things with, <laughs> but... I'll just say motherhood has made me a serious type of person. Those of you who have been here since, I mean, single and comparing my life now, you guys would know there is a huge difference. There is, in fact, some people have unsubscribed in the past. Like, I don't know who this girl is anymore. I don't, like, I can't recognize. This is not who I subscribe to because that is what motherhood does to you. It changes you in all ramification. Um, but definitely, it's for the better, it's for good Things have improved. I mean, self-growth, the things I've learned about myself, I I just cannot. I I like I can't begin to comprehend. I've taken my life seriously. I've done a whole lot of planning that I've never done in my whole life as a mom. I've done more planning as a mom than as a single girl. 
I've given up a lot of things as a mom. I've had to compromise a lot of things. I would call them sacrifices. I've had to sacrifice a lot of things that I would necessarily or ordinarily not think twice. You know, as a single girl, you know, I'll just think about these things and just I'm on the go, like bring it on. Let me go. Let me, where is it? Let's get it. But as a mom, I consider, okay, the thing I'm, I want to do now, would it affect my children? Would it affect me? Would it make me look a certain way? You know, that sense of responsibility, that sense of, it comes with a full package. Motherhood has taught me a lot that if I begin to talk about here, this life will not end. But yeah, sorry, if you're asking questions, let me just answer all the ones we have here then you 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 guys can shoot at me um heart to heart tv said please train on how to grow on youtube over the years i've done series of master classes i think after seven years i mean this year will make it seven years on youtube right i feel like i've gotten to that point where i have to create something more permanent for you guys which i'm currently working on I would say before summer, before June, July, you guys are going to get a full package where you can just click and have access to it. You don't need to, you know, even if you want to schedule a consultation, everything you need, everything I've learned about YouTubing throughout the course of seven years will be inside that course and it will be very, very affordable because I know a lot of people are battling the whole cost of living and many people are turning to online as their source of income at least passively so um yeah i'm going to develop a course i've already started working on it just give it time the next four to five months once it's ready i will put it up for you guys and i wouldn't need to do any master class ever again it will just be an accessible course that you can assess anytime anytime you want and yeah hopefully um, you're able to get it when it's out. The next question here is by Teresa Op Opokuma. How are you coping with the children alone as your husband is going to work every day? Hmm. I don't tire. I don't tire. Eh? I don't tire. Marry a doctor, marry a doctor, marry a doctor. I don't... Doctor wife, don't tire. I don't tire. Hmm. Mm -mm. I feel like people who, back then I used to see, you know, in Nigeria, our neighbors who were married to um, oil company workers, who their husbands would probably go offshore three months, six months. I used to feel sorry for their wives. I used to say, Kai, how is this woman coping all alone? But now, eh? Now, <laughs> there's no difference between doctor's wives and those oil company people. No difference sincerely because i mean even when they are home they are planning on how to you know just different things whether it's reading or keeping up with something or work related or just resting it's almost like you're all alone and yeah in nigeria i would say when we had our first child and our second child i didn't really feel it because we're in nigeria we're in nigeria we, i had family even when we started our marriage newly, my husband was working two jobs. Like, I barely used to see him. But I didn't feel it. But now, now, <laughs> with three children, I don't know. I, at this point, I'll say my body has gotten used to it, definitely. Um, but coping, I mean, my joy is that the kids are growing. If these kids were stagnant, it would have been so bad. But the kids are growing, everyone is adjusting, the kids know. Sometimes, especially now, during this Ramadan period, he shifts, as in the way they give him shifts these days, sometimes 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. in the morning, sometimes 12 midnight, like as I'm speaking to you now, he left 12 midnight to come back 8 in the morning, sometimes 9 a.m. to 4. It's the shifts in a week, it's not like it's steady. So. Even if you're saying, okay, let me plan that, there's nothing, you just, it's almost like you're staying alone. There's nothing to plan. The kids have gotten used to it. When he comes back and he knows, okay, he needs to sleep. No one disturbs him. If he's present, we maximize that presence. Once he's, you know, fully awake, whether it's one hour, we know that that period, even the kids know now, 
this is the time to play with daddy to do it's crazy but i feel like this is the phase where we are it's it's the growing phase i believe it will get better i when i asked this question when we traveled to Riyadh and i talked about please doctor's wife let me know in the comment section a lady in the u.s said it gets better her kids are now grown blah 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 that gives me hope that gives me hope but this stage is brutal there is no sugar coating it is it's almost like being a, a single mom it's brutal but um yeah that's all i can say how am i coping i i i, I can't keep myself you just take it one step at a time you i don't expect a lot i don't expect okay my husband would if he can't i just have to do it because who else would do it so um yeah that's the way it is as a new youtuber what are the steps to take new youtuber i would say take your youtube as a business one thing i teach in my master classes all my master classes any venture you feel like you want to do in life whether it's academics whether is anything you plan on doing that you know it's not a hobby you intend on profiting from that thing take it as a business take it as serious as anything and that means showing up that means committing to it that means even if you are as busy as even if you have a nine to five or you're a busy mom or whatsoever the type of seriousness you put into every other thing you have to put it into that new thing if not at some point you just get frustrated and then when i talk about taking it as a business it means the name of your youtube brand or whatsoever cannot be what's your name here hope susan it cannot be hope susan sweetie love lala give it a serious name stand out yes there will be creators that would inspire you there'll be creators that you've watched over the years that you love like this is what i think i want to do maybe it's vlogging maybe it's cooking maybe it's whatsoever maybe there is a niche that you're really interested in don't come out trying to do exactly what that person that inspires you is doing because the viewers will know who you're copying or who you're trying to be like or who you're trying to imitate yes let them inspire you quite all right but find a way to make that inspiration your own carve out your own niche within that same niche say for instance i want to do cooking everyone is doing cooking many people are into cooking there are a lot of cooking influence influencers you know within the nigerian community um how can i stand out with the whole saturated cooking niche maybe this particular um youtuber is known for native foods this one is known for intercontinental this one is known for food reviews how can i blend all and still add a spice of something that would make people meet me halfway that will make me Ghana fans from each and every caliber of these people that inspire me and still bring something new so maybe you can include everything the native the the intercontinental dishes the reviews the food reviews the mukbangs but then the way you would present your own maybe you can do yours in a way that it's exciting you're not doing the conventional putting camera, filming the food. You can do a chit, uh, chit chat whilst cooking. You can do get ready with me um, or how I divorced my uh, first husband. As you're talking about the divorce, you're cooking. So people are being engaged by your cooking, by your story time, by your, you just have to do something different that people are not doing while still maintaining the lane of your niche that would make people appreciate and say, oh, this person is unique. This person is different. Mention all the YouTubers you know within the Nigerian YouTube community. You cannot say this person is exactly like this person. There's a reason why you watch this person. There's a reason why you watch this person. There's, there's something this person would do. You say, nah, this person is copying this person. This person got this inspiration from this person. And that's exactly how you should be as a new YouTuber. Don't come... Because, I mean, I know it's, it's tough. Now everybody, obviously, because of things, 
everyone wants to be online so you just have to stand out you have to break out and you cannot be doing what everybody is doing if you've looked at the trend and the trend is everybody is doing market vlogs everybody is doing this okay let me say for instance the current popping niche now on youtube is this silent vlog thing there's this youtuber i don't know her name she's she's still growing she's a yoruba girl she does these silent vlogs and it's blowing up real good and i've seen a few creators who have started getting inspired by these um silent vlogs and they're still doing it and getting the views but there is something unique about each creator so even if you want to do vlogs you want to enter into lifestyle this silent era now this uh, 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 silent sort of vlogs and whatsoever is now the popping thing. You now know that this is a trend. Now, how do I create content in such a way that I'm doing this silent vlog nature, but my own is different from the people who started it? That is what you should aspire as a new YouTuber. So when people watch you, there's that delight. There's that, oh, this person is different. I like watching this silent vlog, but there's something about this particular silent vlog that sticks that makes me watch till the end so that is what you should um aspire <sighs> yes you're talking about rejoice screen she's based in ibadan exactly so please please um yeah there are so many things to explore youtube it's not a must that you must do what your predecessors have been a pre gene gene are doing find something the new generation now gen z's you guys have everything you have the numbers, you have the clout, you have everything on a platter to blow and to even do better than us who have been here. So explore your options. Look at the... Don't don't think that until you do what Mama Dina is doing before you blow. You may do it and you still be stagnant because the algorithm has... <coughs> The algorithm is no more favoring that sort of content. They are looking for fresh, refined, something new that will get people excited to click and watch so um yeah edith Ezako, at what level or stage will you enroll your kids into school or are you just going to be doing homeschooling for them secondly is there any church church at all where you reside so um for now i'm full-time homeschooling so long as we are in this village so long as we are in gurayat saudi arabia i will be homeschooling them um, I've had other moms here that I've met, other dependents here suggest online school, but I don't think I'm ready for that commitment because my kids, or would I say some Jachi, has not verbally, the stage where I need him to be verbally and socially and with his communication isn't there yet. So enrolling him into online school is still going to be me doing work. I'll still be doing a bulk of the work. But with doing homeschooling, the way I'm doing it, there's structure, there's everything, there's flexibility, there's independent learning, there is a lot. I feel closer to my kids now, and I feel like they, they even have picked up a whole lot because it's me teaching them than if maybe they were in a class or I don't know, I don't know. I can't really say because they haven't been to school. Okay, some that has been. But my mama hasn't. But yeah, I feel like they learn more with this one-on-one -on -one, um, based learning. Secondly, is there any church at all where you reside? No, nope, there isn't. There is no church in Saudi Arabia. No official church in Saudi Arabia. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome. So, Ngozika, Angoka, dear Dinah, do you have any plans from now until three years time coming to nigeria just for mini vacation i love you 100 thank you so much ngozeka love you too three years is a long time to stay away from nigeria if i don't go back to nigeria in that three years it means i'll never step foot in nigeria so definitely there are plans to go and see my daddy and my mommy and my everybody that i left in nigeria my best friend everybody um i recently noticed pregnancy three months ago for my baby number three although unplanned because my baby was still breastfeeding 
I'm in my second trimester now and I have been watching your videos of back-to-back -back childbirth. You are a super mom, Dinah. I appreciate you. May God help me. Oh, blessing. Your body is, is designed to carry children. Whether it's back-to-back, -back, whether it's up and down, whether it's however, so long as that baby is here, I mean, there is this quotation, God cannot give you what you cannot carry. God cannot give you what you cannot bear. Um, look at me now. At some point, I was Jesus Christ. I felt like I couldn't, like, I just couldn't do it. I can't even stand alone and do it. But just look at me. I'm, no matter how much I'm winging it, I'm doing it graciously. I'm doing it with so much gratitude. I'm doing it with so much I'm happy that I did it when I did it. So please don't stress. Focus on the ones, what our advice, unsolicited advice, focus on the first and the second because once the third comes, the attention will definitely move. So this period that you're still breastfeeding your baby, have enough time to, however it is, whatever your budget is, Please, please, please spend time with these two. The first two, spend as much time as you can with them. Um, do what you need to do. Take a lot, a lot of pictures. Take them to parks. Create enough memories. And even when the baby comes, if you have help, enough help, um, and even if you don't have help, always remember that you had two kids before that one came because you can easily get lost and i know it's difficult you can easily get lost in nurturing the baby and forgetting that there are the toddlers that came before that baby so um i'll definitely say it's it's not an easy thing no it's not easy it's it's not easy especially within the first year it's definitely not easy but um with time you'll be grateful that you did it or they came whether planned or un unplanned they came when they came um my last will be two very soon i mean i'm slowly phasing out or would i say i'm fully phasing out from the postpartum up and down um it's still not easy but at the same time i'm glowing now better than Jesus, I've been a mess for the past four or five years. <laughs> for the past four years, I've been a freaking mess. But um, yeah, look at me now. Look at me now. I, I'm just giving it. I'm still doing baby, baby for this last one. Once I clock 30, <coughs> I, I'm not anybody's mother. <laughs> I am my 30s will be my new 20s. Inshallah. <laughs> I'm not anybody's mother. I am not anybody's mother. I am going to be a full wife. <laughs> a full baby. Have you heard of baby girl wife? Have you heard of body wife? That's what I'm that's what I'm going to be in my 30s. But yeah. Do not have any questions for Mama Diana. Just loving and appreciate you, appreciating you as the day goes. You are a source of inspiration. Haven't watched you since 2019. I thank God for your journey. Well done. You know, easy, but you they run now. Thank you, Eddie Series. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Elon Jamo, who is here on this live, giving me back to back. Hey, my beautiful Dinah Queen. I just want to say you're very beautiful. And please kiss my chipmunk cheeks, babies. I wanted to say you're doing an amazing job. And God bless you and your wonderful family. And hope Mama Ekweme have made it back safely home. Yes, she has. She has settled back in. She's lounging. She's chilling. She has started her work. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining this live. Thank you so much. You've been my supporter, even on Instagram. Um, yeah. And your granddaughter, I know you. I know you. I share, I think I share also one of my babies share birthday with your husband or your granddaughter something something along that line but yeah you've been so consistent in this journey and i really appreciate you um yeah i think one more question before the community area is done has your stones 
has your son started talking yet? Please. I mean your first. Hmm. My son hasn't started talking, no. My son hasn't started talking. My son is book smart. My son, tell him to write everything he writes. I mean, with the homeschooling, sometimes I get scared. Some things I don't even teach. When we go outside, he's pointing, he's saying the things, one, one word. If he needs something, he says one word, one syllable. When it comes to reading, he reads. Most of you have watched me on Instagram where my son is reading, reading, reading. He reads a full novel. He reads stories. All the books his dad even recently got, he's been reading, reading, reading. Some judge talk now. Mm -mm. I'll ask my son, what is your name? Okay, recently he has started saying his name. My name is Some Jachi. How are you? He will just be looking at you. How are you? He'll tell you, how are you? What did you do today? He'll tell you, what did you do today? Like, it's at this point, I don't even know. It's, I'm getting worried because he'll be five by September. Um, recently, the whole dependence in Gurayat here that I'm living, the village where I'm living, they started this thing last month that every weekend, twice in a week, everyone with kids, we meet up at the hospital's park. So I just started joining them last week and I hope to keep doing it until summer, twice a week. Some of the kids here, they are already speaking. There are some six-year-olds, seven-year-olds. There are kids here, a lot of kids here. Some are talking. Some are also having delayed speech. Some are, yeah, just because of the lack of, you know, English English school for experts, um, most kids here are finding it really difficult to speak. And it's really affecting my son. My son is smart. When I say smart, he reads, he, anything I need him to do, if I, in fact, he hears Igbo more than English. He speaks Igbo. When his, his uh, junior brother and his junior sister is crying, he will say, ndo, ndo, ndo. Bia, he says almost all the Igbo words that I use here. He says, I don't know, like at this point, I'm really, I'm getting worried. I've told my husband that if it persists before the end of the year, we may be going to Nigeria just for him to mix with kids. Like I, that's my worry. And before we came here, my mama used to speak to some degree. Like you ask my mama, how are you? She would say fine. But now, because there is no avenue to mix with kids or whatsoever, whatever some Jachi does, he emulates. He emulates everything some Jachi does. And most of you have been asking for this autism thing. My dear, here they speak Arabic. How there's no speech therapist here for us to say, okay, let's go and meet this person to diagnose him or to, you know, just go through the proper thing. The, the 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 native language here is Arabic. We don't live in a big city where we can easily get, you know, access to a specialist or something. So at this point, I'm getting worried. I'm really, really getting worried. My son cannot make full sentences. <sighs> like it gets it gets me really frustrated. Like September, that's like five months from now or six months from now. My son will be five and he can't speak, but he knows every other thing. Like, tell him to write. He writes one, O-N-E, S-I-X, six, S-E-V-E-N, seven, one to hundred. He will write it for you. A, B, C, D to Z. He will write it for you. Read. He will read books. When we go outside, he reads signposts. He reads everything. But to talk is a problem. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I, if by July, August, nothing improves, <laughs> we may be, we may be going back home. We may be touching Africa, but I hope that's not the case. But let's see. Let's keep monitoring. Um, yeah, that's that's for the community. Let me open up Instagram questions. <laughs> Go with him to the hospital for autism test. Here they don't speak English. That's the problem. We stay in uh, in Saudi. Saudi is an Arabic 
how like the most of them here cannot speak english there is no specialist here that deals with such issues i don't know how to explain it but yeah make with a watch i'm just hoping that before summer things things will change you can you can tell that he's trying you can tell that he's try speaking only one language to him it may be confusing with all the languages funny enough yagazier is talking <laughs> so that's when you're talking about this speaking one language yagazier hears Igbo. yagazier when i say yagazier that's my last baby who is just one year and six months six seven eight months one year eight months yeah my last baby is one year eight months he hears Igbo, he hears English, he speaks both. Although he's still mumbling, he comes to me, he says, Mommy, I want water. I want to eat. Mommy, I want to eat. Mommy, I poo. The baby is talking. So I don't think it's, a, it's an issue of speaking two languages to him. I really, I really don't think because... In fact, it's at this stage that kids are bombarded with, if you want your kids to learn different languages, is at this stage that you get them. Because if they go past 10, 11, 12, it gets difficult. This is the best stage if you want to get them to learn your mother tongue or whatsoever language you want them to learn. This is the stage. So, I, like, I don't know. My baby is speaking. It's just him. <sighs> but, yeah let's see how summer goes let's see how from now at least with the dependent thing going out let me you know monitor him see what will happen even at this point i'm making the effort to every day just stop since he's already understanding Igbo, just focus on getting him to speak english and you know just say a lot of things he can say one or two things even when he says mommy, he doesn't say mommy. He says mommy, mommy. Yagazie says mommy. My mama says mommy. But some Jachi will say mommy, mommy, mommy. And then when he does it, sometimes my mama will emulate him and say mommy, mommy. But when she's alone, she will call me mommy. So it's, it's really tricky. It's tricky. So now we're on to Instagram. Um questions what advice do you have for young stay-at-home moms building a family um young stay-at-home moms building a family i would say prioritize yourself definitely prioritize yourself one thing i did in nigeria that i'm one thing i didn't do in nigeria that i'm learning and i'm doing here is in Nigeria, I let myself go. Like, I just... F the moment the babies started coming, I made it all about the babies. I didn't used to think... I, you people remember me in Nigeria now. I didn't used to think about, okay... <laughs> let me just give an instance. I would go to shops, I will buy clothes and clothes and things for my kids. Before I remember that I have to buy things for myself. Maybe months and months have passed. Before I remember, I, I need to get a new brow. I need to get a new pint. I need to do this. I need to do that. The 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 motherhood was motherhood in, in Nigeria. I didn't have that much priority for myself. I didn't prioritize. I won't say I didn't prioritize. I did prioritize my marriage. I mean, the relationship I had with my husband. Although we were just starting our life, the kids were coming back to back. So... There was no priority like that, I would say, with my husband, even with the situation in Nigeria. No, I would say I did. I did in the sense that, oh, I, I wouldn't say I did. We both did. Because in Nigeria, I felt like we had time to do a lot of things. We used to watch football together. We used to do a lot of things together. But here, the way I'm selfish with myself, the way I'm putting myself first, because if you don't do it, now, Chris. <laughs> so as a young stay-at-home mom, not just prioritizing yourself, put yourself first in everything you're doing. Yes, sometimes the kids, the kids, the kids, 
But when you dedicate your whole day, everything, maybe a whole week, you've not said, okay, what have I done for myself? That was me in Nigeria. Everything was mommy, 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 mommy. I'll do school runs. I'll do this one. I'll do that one. Everything for the kids, for the kids, for the kids, for the kids. Sometimes I even forget that it's me and man that is inside the house doing this kids thing. And if the thing about relationship is, if you don't put in effort, and the other person is not putting in effort, there's a ten, <clears throat> there's a chance. That that's the way things will just be going. Two of you will just be when you talk, it's only about the kids. Valentine Day in Nigeria, the, the first Valentine's that we had in Nigeria, I gave birth to some Jachi, right? We were still talking about baby, 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 everything, kids, kids, kids. But this last Valentine, the kids were there. I wasn't even acting like the kids were there. I was talking to my husband. Personal questions things about him you ask me things about me the efforts to prioritize ourselves because you can easily because of the mundane or the repetitive everyday kids kids children children you can easily get lost in that so as a stay-at-home mom building a family please prioritize yourself the second thing is as a stay-at-home mom finances with everything happening on social media, with everything happening now, with the way the economy is set up, with the way things are going, it's even expensive now to be a stay-at-home mom. Any man forcing you in this economy to be a stay-at-home mom should in some way prioritize, even if it's five kobo that he's giving you every month. Because let's face facts. You're a cleaner, you're a teacher, you're a cook, you're still a wife. You're all in one. So if at the end of the day, you keep filling everybody's cup, doing everything for your kids, doing everything for your man, one day you will wake up and you feel empty. You feel like, what, what have I done? What has been my purpose? And... I found that the first few years of marriage, that was what, like, how would I put it? I was always feeling like I was stagnant or nothing was happening. Did I come to this life to have kids? Believe me, when the kids are still young and you're still better, at some point it hits you like, now nah, children, when I come this life, they're born. <laughs> you feel stuck. You feel like you're not progressing. You feel like you're, you know, this is just what you're good at and what you're good for. There is no meaning to your life. Even if there is so much meaning to your life, you're birthing kids. If people are showing their own degrees and certificates, you have your kids' certificate to show as proof <laughs> of what you've been doing with your life. However, finances is something that you should take very important. If you've chosen or if your husband has made it mandatory or has given you the option that you should stay home and cater for the kids, please negotiate some sort of salary. Negotiate some sort of, at the end of the month, even if he's earning, for instance, 30,000 Naira, out of this 30,000 Naira, please, Staying at home, not doing anything, just focusing on the kids and doing all these things. Please, at the end of the month, this is how much you should be giving. And that money is outside of your upkeep, outside of if you need anything to do, you know, maybe something emergency comes up, you need to get this thing or whatsoever. It should be outside of that. At the end of the month, you should have something for yourself. So even if you're saving it and building it into an investment whatsoever, whether you're putting it in stocks, whether you're buying assets with it, whether you're making it compound, over the years you're being a stay-at-home mom, at the end of the day, you are not empty. Because believe me, one day these kids will grow up and they'll have their own lives. One day, it won't be about the kids anymore. One day you'll be forced. You'll be forced to have a relationship with your husband because at this stage it feels like everything you guys do or everything we do is all about the kids so at some point in future i know 
at some point in future because I've seen matured couples. I see couples every day. So if you've not been able to do it simultaneously as you're raising kids, that's when you hear cases of we grew apart. This happened, that happened, this, that. Everybody to their own lane. Two people may be living together, but they are truly not together. So no matter what the case is, as a woman, as a stay-at-home mom, you're more prone to a lot of future occurrences and risk oh, in this day and age, in this period where you need two incomes to sustain families because of the global cost of living or recession or whatsoever that is happening. So if you're choosing to stay home to raise kids, please solicit, fight for something to be entering your account and be building, not just be using it to buy pizza, buy this, save, invest, find out things that you can do financially with that money to grow, to grow yourself, whether you're putting it into financial education, whether you're using it to buy something, whether you're using it to invest in whatsoever, that's what you should figure out being a stay-at-home mom with that money your husband is giving you. But yeah, I know it's not easy. There are people who are already squeezed to the point where everything is just going for the upkeep of the home and everything. Like I said, at the end of the day, just find a way and put your head somewhere and say, I need something for myself. If not, I want to go to work. <laughs> if not, I'll go to work. Everybody to daycare, to childcare. So, yeah, you just have to be stubborn about it because now women, they lose oh, in most cases. Will you love coming back to Nigeria, please, with reason? Definitely. There's no reason. Nigeria is my home. There, there shouldn't be a reason for me to go back to Nigeria. Nigeria is my home. This particular question, everybody was just asking. Are you pregnant? What makes you people think I'm pregnant? <laughs> What makes you people think I'm pregnant? Sis, let me tell you the truth. I'm in USA five years. I was doing that, but you see all money, pay bill, and nothing. Rest, but women must be financially independent. Definitely, but living in the USA now, I don't know if you have babies or children. Most of the Western economies, childcare is not a joke. Imagine if I had this back-to-back -back kind of situation and maybe we move to the usa how would i have been working it means that all my kids will probably be in daycare and all my salary will be going to child care for me it's i don't know i don't know i don't want to say what will piss some people off but for me personally i would rather do this in this their age and save on that child care in fact give me that child care money or I'll find some side hustle or something that will be giving me small, small pennies here and there. Once the kids are of school age, I can start from scratch. Because anytime I think of going back to work now, I know I'm going to start from scratch. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start from scratch. So at the end of the day, it's sacrifices, it's compromises, it's values. Some women may see it as I just can't. The kids have to go to daycare. I don't mind using my whole salary for daycare, them being in school from morning till evening. Some women, like everybody with their own orientation. But for me personally, if I was in the US or any Western economy, I will still be a stay-at-home mom. If we want to be poor, let's be poor and save on that childcare and make sure that these kids, this fundamental stage, zero to four, I'm with them. There is no detachment. They know me. I know them. So um, I know it's difficult. It's not easy for a lot of households. But yeah, like I said, these are the sacrifices. Um, Zaichi asked, are you pregnant? Are you pregnant? This is the question everybody was asking. What makes you people think I'm pregnant? Eh? Am I glowing? <laughs> What makes you people think I'm pregnant? Like, I got six are you pregnant questions. Why would people be thinking, am I pregnant? Am I pregnant? Am I pregnant? I reject, oh, I reject anything that will make me pregnant this period. 
Answer, I am not. I am not hoping to be. I don't want to be. There is no baby number four. And I'm praying that it remains like this for now because I have a lot on my plate, sincerely. MOGST asked, do you have plans to immigrate to any European country in the future? Hmm. So this is the issue. This is, this is, how do I start this <laughs> explanation? So before coming here, most of you who live here in Saudi or who have emigrated from Saudi to other parts of um, the world, most of you know that most doctors who come here move to either UK, Canada, Australia, America. These are the four popular places most doctors move from here, at least many. Is it that they move to these four countries or they just stay here? Or some move to Dubai? So, with everything I've learned in the past one year, there is a serious friction happening within this house, within this, our home. So, my husband wants to move west. I want to stay within the east or Africa. I have a couple of countries that I have in mind to move to. And most of you who have been following my political channel, most of you are aware. Most of you know the reasons why I do not want to move west. But my husband, my husband hasn't lived in the West before. He has been, he has traveled for vacation, for holiday, for other things, but he hasn't lived in the West. So when I explain certain things to him, he only understands from his own point of view and from the herd mentality of most of what the doctors here are doing. Me, who is a full-grown adult entitled to something within this marriage at least my own plans i have a couple of countries that i've been fighting for him to at least look at i would share some of them number one if you're asking like this question asked um do i have plans to immigrate to any um european country the only european country i'm interested in is malta and it's for obvious reasons cost of living the prospects a whole lot um and the possibility that even if a world war three happens Malta wouldn't get involved because with the way things are going in the west and even in europe we are not going to avoid it no matter how much people don't care about all this political stuff is already heating up and yeah let's not delve into that I have Singapore in mind as well. I have Thailand in mind. I have Rwanda in mind. I have the only Western economy I have in mind is New Zealand. Well, New Zealand, don't they do like Australia too with the whole cost of living and all. So these are majority of the places that I am Mexico, Mexico as well. Mexico, Rwanda, Malta, Singapore, Thailand, Costa Rica, and Riyadh. These are the places I've suggested he should look into. Obviously, Riyadh is out of the question because him, he's looking at progressing. If you didn't know, if you're a doctor, um, probably you're a consultant in Nigeria. If you come to Saudi, you stay there. You, stay, you, you don't move up. You stay on that level you that's what you'll be paid after a few years they increase your salary small 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 but the stage you came in is the stage you stay forever there is no moving up the ladder that's the problem here in saudi unlike say for instance if you're a doctor and you move to the us or you move to the uk or canada you can start with residency and you move up the ladder here you stay where you are and that's where my husband is having an issue um with he doesn't want to stay in Riyadh. He doesn't want to move to Riyadh. But um, yeah, we're just caught up with the whole East versus West. I've, I would have loved to move to Western economies. Before now, like I didn't mind. But with everything I know now, everything happening, hmm, no, no, no. 
if it was just me and my husband, I don't mind. Like we can hustle it out. We can we can grind it out. People enjoying the West are people who are going to school, single people or new newly married couples who are starting off life. You know, you can plan your life, plan everything according to the economy, set up yourself financially, and you know know how you go. But a family of five. And I mean, those of you who are living in the West, you guys know. Yes, I'm not saying the West is bad. They are, these countries, the US, UK, top big countries. But looking at where we are as a family, three kids. I'm not entering, let me say we leave this year or even next year. I'm not going to enter and then all my kids will go to school. We have to start thinking of childcare. And even if I think of, okay, I want to go back to work or I want to start to, I will start with bottom level because I've never had to work in my life. But staying in the East whilst the kids grow to the point where, okay, it's okay. It's for the family when you look at everything. Like here in Saudi, even if my husband's family and my own family lives in this two bedroom apartment, only his salary can feed all of us three square meals a day no shaking and he will still be able to save but we can't say the same if we all move to the west as a family of five right now life in the west is becoming extremely expensive yes like i said it's doable if you're a single person if you're a newly married couple heck if you're if you're a family of three it's still doable but imagine moving as a family of five in this day and age with the anxieties that come with immigration, with the unforeseen higihaga of Western economies. At the stage we are as a family, it's not sustainable. And that's where we've been going back and forth. The good thing about Saudi is Saudi allows you to plan. Saudi allows you to Think about where you're going. That's why when people say they need 50 million, 20 million to move out of Nigeria, move west. You can move to smaller countries and plan your life. And those countries will even help you move to wherever you want to move to. I've seen doctors here apply for American visas, Canadian visas. They give them 10 years, 5 years. Just for vacation, 10 years. Here, they will be giving you like there's no tomorrow because of the law, because of the respect they have for this country, because of a lot. But I see Saudi as a stepping stone. I see Saudi as where we should be. In fact, I'm happy we are where we are. Because if, say for instance, with our situation, we, were, we will be struggling. We will definitely be struggling. If we were in Nigeria right now, I don't think Yagazi would have even been here. We'll still be struggling even with having just um, some Jachi and Mama Ma because in Nigeria I wasn't working. We will still be struggling. If we move west right now, for people advising move west, you have to look at the dynamics of the family, the circumstances. You should move for your kids' concern. There is nothing to be concerned about my kids. Do you know that there are people in the U.S. who are homeschooling? I have a, because of this homeschooling thing I'm doing, I have a lot of mothers on Instagram who are in the U.S. homeschooling full-time. They have toddlers. They have uh, uh, preschool kids. They have even kids of school age. They are fully homeschooling. So... One thing I've mentioned on my YouTube channel is, yes, there is quality, there is value, there is a lot of things that the West, you, you know, how will I put it, offer. I schooled in the West, so I cannot wake up and say the West has never been good to me. That I have a degree today is the UK. The UK made that possible, and that was when the West was the West. In fact, I can't imagine living in the West now with everything I'm seeing as a family. I mean, as a single person, you may not struggle. 
as a family of two, you may not struggle. As a family of three, you may not struggle. Imagine me being a stay-at-home mom now in the West. My husband is the only one working. Do you know the struggle? Do you know? Sometimes you just have to do things that favors your family. Not because people are doing it. Not because everybody is doing it. There should never be any pressure. Where is good for you, you stay there. You build your life, you pick it up small, small. It's stage by stage. If the West is for us, one day we will get there. But one thing I'm saying is, Saudi gives us the option. Because here, if you want to travel, they sponsor your ticket, they give you everything. You don't need to pay for anything. The time my husband traveled to the UK, they gave him everything. They sponsored everything for him. So that's what Saudi offers. Saudi allows you to think before you move. I cannot say I'm moving because everybody's moving to the UK, everybody's moving to Canada, everybody's moving to US. Let me pack and go and go and struggle because I want to be in the UK, because I want my kids to go to school. I have to look within and know what is working for us now. The structure we have now, what is working for us? And that's where we are. And the dilemma is, my husband is done with most of his exams. It's still just this, I don't want to move west. Not with three kids. Not with back-to-back -back children. Not with not having worked in my life. Even with the rubbish job market now. To get a job now, it's crazy. So, at the end of the day, Saudi is just what it is for us. It's just a means to an end. And I'm glad we're here. God made it that way. God made it in a way that maybe he saw even these suffer people who are thinking that I'm doing, I'm suffering here. If I enter West, <laughs> all these slay, you are the slay. <laughs> I'm not go see slay. <laughs> I'll be looking like all weekend. Because <laughs> imagine, let's, let's put the maths together. Imagine my first is how old? Four year old, right? My second is three year old. My last is one year old. Let me say we're in the UK now. Mm -hmm. The only person that will be going to school full time is who? Some Jachi, right? And my husband is not maybe one of these professions you go nine, you come back five. It will probably be long ass shifts, taking up weekends taking up this thing, taking up just because I'm staying at home, just because he has to cover costs. So everything will be on my head. I will wake up, bad three children, take only one to school whilst carrying two along. Okay, my three-year-old will go to school in the UK three times a week, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, she's, she's going to be with me. Then my one-year-old will not go to school at all. Can you imagine the suffering? Can you imagine the suffering? Then look at the pay of doctors there. Compare the pay of doctors in the UK and the pay we're getting here in Saudi. Compare. It's not even close. So at the end of the day, Saudi is the best thing that happened for us or happened to us at this stage. If we dare live here and move west, you know, I keep saying this thing to my husband. He thinks it's a joke. It's not just me that will see the shege. Yes, me, I will see premium shege. But my husband will still see shege banza. He will still see shege banza. So at this stage, when these kids are developing, this is the best time to stay here. I'll give it maybe two to three years to still be in Saudi. After that, I don't know. But sincerely, if the West is still the West, in the next two to three years, I don't, I'd rather do long distance marriage than move west. And this is me. Call it stubbornness, call it whatsoever. I, I just can't. I can't. I, I, like, I already have enough anxiety as a mom, you know, without support, doing all this. It's almost like living alone. What, like, what's going to be the difference? The difference would be, okay, maybe he comes back from work and still sees the kids. If I'm still running everything alone and I just can't, I just can't. 
So um, if he insists on going west in the next two years and the west is still the west or maybe worse because the way the west is going is looking, things are not looking good. So it's, at, at this point, I don't know. I can't really say, I can't, I can't say no. I can't say yes, but I'm hoping that things change. I'm hoping that all this immigration up and down cools I'm hoping I'm hoping that all this world war thing by governments everywhere, especially Western economies, I just hope it dies down. If not, I can't. I can't like I just can't. Saudi is still a leverage for us here. It gives us time to plan. It gives us time to take our time. By next year, my last baby will be three. So anytime from 2026, I'll be fully prepared to leave Saudi. Because by 2026, Yagazi will be four. So that's school age in most countries, in, in a lot of countries. So there's no rush. I'm not rushing anywhere. Um, we're able to save more here. We're able to do a lot more here. Even with him being busy, I still get to see my husband to some degree. Um, yeah, that, that's just the plan for now. The immigration plan is... He's, he's just, every time we talk about it, it ends up with heated arguments for and against. It just ends up with, I don't want to move here. This one said, I don't want to move here. I don't want to move here. This one said, I don't want to move here. So that's where we are for now. But yeah, will you at any point in the future collaborate with a new YouTuber just to help? <laughs> Hey, share year or for it. It's like you're new to this channel. We've been there and done that too. We've collaborated with everybody. So that one is past tense. There's no future. If it happens, it happens. I don't, this uh, collaboration to help, I don't believe it. If it happens, it happens. The people who I collaborated with in the past that were bigger than me, way bigger, people like Miss Trudy Wodemaya, by your Aina, it was it just happened. I reached out to Wodemaya and he responded. Tayo Aina reached out to me. It just happened. It, it, it was just a natural link up. I'm not forcing anything. If it happens, it happens. But collaborating just to help. So that tomorrow they will come and drag me. No. I know they help. Make everybody help themselves. If you had the opportunity, where would you move to between Dubai and Riyadh and why? <laughs> definitely Riyadh. I'll definitely move to Riyadh. Why? Because Dubai has <laughs> Dubai has been washed and rinsed by everybody has been to Dubai. Everybody, everybody and their father have been to Dubai. But Riyadh, Riyadh is is kicking it. Riyadh is developing rapidly. Um, I would move to Riyadh because of Vision 2030. I will move to Riyadh because of the crowned prince, Prince Mohammed um, bin Salman, because of every... In fact, I've been to Dubai, I've been to Riyadh, and I would say Riyadh is it for me. Like, I know when I went to Dubai, I was still a child. And I know Dubai has definitely changed over the years, but with everything I'm seeing... I've seen, everybody has been to Dubai. So even if I've not been there, I've seen everything Dubai has to offer. But Riyadh is like that baby that is still coming up that you know the future is very bright. I don't know how to explain it. You know that there is so much, uh, so much prospect. The Riyadh season really opened my eyes to a lot. And is rapidly developing so many prospects. It's the future. So definitely Riyadh. Riyadh is like my dream. If my husband gets a job in Riyadh, I wouldn't even think twice. I don't care. Don't give me passport. Don't give me citizenship. I, I will stay in Riyadh till I die. <laughs> I will live in Riyadh. That's how much I love the city. So, um, yeah. Hi, Dinah. From a scale of 1 to 10, how likely is it for you to reside in, in Saudi permanently? Like I said, 1 to 10, it depends if my husband allows or if he gets a job whether it's in riyadh jeddah any city that has 
schools for kids more open more than here i'm down 10 over 10 i'll permanently stay here no questions asked i mean everybody in the world is complaining about cost it's just here i'm yet to see a video from the middle east anybody complaining okay there is a cost of living crisis or they can't afford this they can't afford housing they can't like this is just at this point in in in, in this lifetime this is the best place to live because they've not started imposing income tax your money is your money even if you get paid only hundred thousand naira, that money is your money there is nothing like pay this paid it's your money so anybody who leaves the middle east now to say they want to go and be paying 40 percent 20 percent there must be something taking it if it's not something valuable if it's not to develop yourself or to grow it's a mumu decision no i don't know it's a mumu decision i can't really say but if there is no, if you've attained everything you've attained in life maybe you've hit the pinnacle of your career and you stay here and you say you don't like it you want to move hmm. i don't know what to ever make you satisfied though I'd like i don't know because here everything you don't pay for health care you want to do surgery is free you want to do anything is free everything is literally close to you you want to order things from china it, it's everything is just you want to travel back you want to do like every you're just in the middle of everything it's just almost like living in africa so and it's conservative it's i don't know i don't know but yeah people and their choices how can someone apply for a caregiver job over there in saudi or the village you reside okay for chisum my dear take this advice from me take this advice from me if you want to move to the middle east if you want to move to saudi come as a professional to avoid sea finish to avoid the party to avoid bigimanism just come as a professional if you want to enjoy saudi come with respect on your shoulder pad if not i, I don't really advise people to come here as domestic worker caregiver the restaurants getting the classism here is subtle it's more like this but being black and being of a certain job caliber is pronounced if you know you know so if you're coming here just just come as a professional come as a doctor come as a nurse med lab scientist teacher engineer just come as a, a professional that's if you want to enjoy this country that's all i can say i wouldn't advise you if you want to do caregiver job it's better you go to uk where you'll be a king you live like a king without caregiver job go to the uk in fact they will respect you more in the uk as a carer as a caregiver than saying you're coming here to do caregiver it's just my personal take no questions you're really loved mwah, mwah. thanks do you like homeschooling so far what are the benefits you've seen being the teacher of your kids i do like homeschooling i didn't think i would like it when i started obviously ah it was work before i got my mama to start tracing jesus christ oh my god hmm it took almost since September until now, before my mama now can approach. She, she's now tracing. She traces anything you give her to trace now. She traces everything. She traces two pages in one session of homeschooling. And my session is like 40 minutes, 50 minutes. She can trace perfectly. So do I like it so far? I like it because what I teach is what they know. No propaganda, no nothing the power i have as a parent 
or the power I have or the values I have or the things I want them to know. I don't know how to explain. It's not diluted. There's nobody influencing them or there's nothing influencing them. There's no external force telling them this is wrong or pumping in propaganda into their head. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Like, for instance, when it comes to values, our family values, I believe you're a girl and you're a boy. And I'm teaching her that you're a girl, ma, 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 some dachi, you're a boy, right? But if you're in a public school setting, say if you're in the West, there is that form of propaganda with alphabets. You guys know what I'm talking about and where I'm heading to. That even if you as a Christian person or Muslim or whatever religion you practice, they can go to school and be brainwashed or be given that propaganda that because they're, that they are boys or girls, they can choose to be the opposite gender. Even if that's not what you, that's, I mean, that's not your value. That's not your family value. That it doesn't sit well with you. And if they spend more time in school than they do with you, after a few years or along the line, the likelihood of them buying into that propaganda or the chances is significant. So the, the, the essence of homeschooling has blocked that. <laughs> don't feed my kids what I don't want them to know. What are the benefits you've seen being the teacher of your kids? Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you so much for the donation, for the super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the benefits I've seen so far is my kids are more independent. I mean, because I'm teaching them or because I'm sharing things with them or because I've given them this avenue that you can learn independently. Like now, before it used to be just some Jachi who I used to heavily focus on because I felt like my mama wasn't really, she was still too, still coming. So I, I didn't used to force her. I didn't used to make it like mandatory for her to join. If she wanted to scribble, she could scribble. But then now, because some Jachi has picked up quickly with numbers, alphabets, when we're doing more brain work, let me say counting of things and putting them together or multiplying things or adding up things, I'm no longer instructing him 247, put this, do that, do that. I open up the page. He will keep doing it. If he's stuck somewhere, he will come to me and say, mommy, look at this or look, look. I'll now count. I'll now ask him this plus this and I'll break it down for him. So it's promoted that independent learning in the way that whenever we go outside, the things I've not done with these kids, my husband even gets shocked. Like, how did they know this? How did they know that? They will say the traffic red means stop. Yellow means ready and green means go. They say a lot of things that, where is this coming from? Some Jachi, because of the sounds and the letters and how I started with the whole reading thing, he can pick up a book and re start reading by himself. Nobody is disturbing him. Nobody is asking him. He will just pick up a book and be reading. So it has created that I'm not waiting for somebody to teach me or to force me to learn. I can learn. I can do it. I don't know how to explain it, Sha, but it's something that I don't think I did as a kid. I remember, I mean, my mom has to come and talk to me and say, oh, you have to, or my dad has to say, have you done this? You have to go and do this. You have to go and do that. Pick up this, do that. These kids are... Literally, he will come into the room. If he sees a book, maybe my husband's book, he'll open it. He'll start pronouncing words line for line. Even if he's not getting some of them right, he will just be pronouncing things, advanced, life, support. He will just be reading it on his own. Same with mama. Ma, if, he's, if she sees things, she can be playing or doing whatsoever. She'll pick up something and say, oh, one toy, two toys, three toys she will say it to herself there are three toys here 
they just apply things in real life that it amazes me that I'm actually creating impact. I'm actually impacting on these kids. What part of Africa are you from? I'm Nigerian. I be Niger, babe. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the benefit is how they are able to pick up things easily. How excited they get because in a day we don't do it for hours. So whenever it's time for homeschooling, Jesus Christ, they start screaming, start hailing, start yeah. Even your guys here now. I post them on my Instagram story. People are shocked. Even your guys here can I identify colors, can I identify a lot, a lot of things. So because he's seeing others learn, him he's picking up to even without me teaching him. So it's. It has, created, it, it has created that closeness. It has created independence. I mean, when I say independence is, I'm not telling them you have to do this or you must do this or you have to do this. They just do it. It has created that excitement to want to learn. There's that excitement to want to learn within them. I'm not forcing them. Once I bring out the books, everybody knows it's schooling time. And that two hours, they give it to me without dividing their attention. Everybody is focused because they know it's not running for the whole day. And sometimes in a week, out of seven days, it's only four days that we do this. So, yeah. So many changes I've seen. And I don't know. People who are homeschooling, now I see why they enjoy homeschooling. It's not just the aspect of blocking the propaganda or whatsoever it's also knowing fully well that everything you teach them they've probably surpassed the stage where their mates are they, they are doing way better they learn more they do more and you're able to incorporate outdoor stuff activities things together that i mean you have full control of what your kids know and what they learn it's not everybody's cup of tea, but yeah, so far I'm loving it. Do you think your creative juice has been negatively impacted since your move to Saudi? If anything, it has. Eh? In Nigeria, was I this creative? Look at my vlogs now and look at my vlogs in Nigeria. Was there even effort when I was in Nigeria? <laughs> there wasn't any much effort when I was in Nigeria. In fact, last year, I, I was active on Instagram. I was active on TikTok. It was this year I said, nope, I'm going to slow down. <laughs> I, nah, 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 nah. I have to slow down. But um, yeah, Saudi, yes, it has been challenging. It has been difficult without lack of support and all of that. But I feel like my creativity here, I've had time, more time to learn a whole lot of stuff. I'm more consistent here. Yes, it's different, obviously. It may not be everybody's cup of tea. Most people um, clocked out when I moved to Saudi because they've always known me for, you know, Nigerian content. But creative aspect, I feel like I've done better in the past one year plus here in Saudi than I've ever done in Nigeria. So, um... So I'll say that's a positive for me when it comes to my creat uh, creativity. But if you're asking if it has impacted my channel, like the views and all, I'll say to some degree, yes. Would you accept mom's proposal of having baby number four? And what is hobby's take on this one? Nope. She has three more boys after me that are not yet married. She should wait for them to go and get married and go for their omugo. I am done. Three, I'm done. My husband, done as well. So no amount of begging. And unless people want to come and be surrogates for me, eh? if you're that kind or if you so much want to carry baby for me or you want to see me with another baby, come and carry it for me. Hmm? For free, oh, I don't get shishi to give you. <laughs> How are you really keeping up with making friends in Saudi? Because I'm in a similar situation. Anastasia Obi Law. Um, how am I keeping up? I'm not keeping up. Oh. It was when I came new. Obviously, I didn't know anybody. There was uh, the shock. Uh -uh. People there here, 
and severally in most of my vlogs i talked about it i was like are there people here i need to see some body and then i went for one party one of the doctors she celebrated her 50th birthday party i filmed it i put it on youtube i met nana there and since meeting nana i don't if people know me now i'm my i don't expand my my circle of friends i'm not the type of friend that i'm not the type of person that likes a large clique of friends if i find one person that i vibe with or that i feel like we're on the same wavelength and frequency i mean what more do i need why do i need a battalion no so nana is more than enough for me she's everything i need in a friend here she has toddlers i have toddlers whenever she needs me i'm there whenever i need her she's there i mean you don't need a whole battalion to make a friend out of you know make have friendship you just need one person that gets you one person that you know think alike that is on the same pace with you one person you don't need to be doing the most for that you don't need to form for she understands me i understand that there's no oh before she comes to my house let me do this let me mm -mm. You see me as I am. I see you as you are. No for me, no nothing. So she's, she's everything I needed here. I mean, Saudi would have been a lot lonely if I didn't have Nana as a friend. I mean, I've met a lot of people here. Oh, don't get me wrong. But there is no effort to want to get personal with them or to know deeply about them. I'm more than content with being friends with Nana. And yeah when are you coming back <laughs> this question rookie you gonna see me very soon not be when are you coming back better keep it share for me not be by when are you coming back better keep something <laughs> why have thou forgotten me chief vera chief chief me forget you uh -uh. no no how can i forget you who remembers chief vera the OGs, they should know Chief Vera. The Enugu, Enugu YouTuber. Shout out to Chief. Go and follow her. Chief underscore Vera here on YouTube. Chief Vera, she's an Igbo girl. She does Enugu. I don't know if she still does. But she resides in Enugu in Nigeria. And if you're looking for so, that sort of content, Eastern content and things, go follow her YouTube channel what has been your biggest challenge in your marriage <laughs> this one is plenty since moving to saudi the biggest challenge in my marriage is child care child care eh? child care has been at, at some point i think towards the end of next last year before my mom came i just zoned out i just said in fact i, I got tired of saying okay let me let me I just started doing a lot of things by myself. I just gave up. <laughs> so um, yeah, childcare has been, whee, childcare has been tough. It has really impacted our marriage, especially the first few months I came. It, <laughs> it was a problem balancing things out. My husband's schedule, feeling like I don't have enough help. You know, now at this point. Anywhere I go, I carry all my children. I know they ask again. Because the moment you ask, okay, would you be free? Are you working on this day? Before you know it, they give him a shift that is out of the ordinary. <laughs> You'll now be stuck with, okay, I made plans and I couldn't. So at this point, I just do everything with my kids. If I can't, I will schedule with Nana. Nana, please, are you free? Can you stay with the kids? Let me figure something out. <laughs> so, yeah. At this point, yeah, that and finances, 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 because here as a dependent, most of you know, if you're a dependent here in Saudi, you're not allowed to work. <laughs> you don't have a job. So um, that's the only downside about here. And that's why I've been really working hard to get a master's, get one of these scholarships because Almost every month, they are pumping out master's and PhD scholarships. If I can get a scholarship, obviously, my visa can be switched from dependent to student. And you guys know here in Saudi, as a student, you get paid every month. <laughs> Where have you heard of that? 
there's this new school I'm trying to apply to. And they pay $1,600 every month. If you're interested, send me a DM. Scholarship for a lot of courses, many courses, anyone you're interested. They'll do your relocation package. They'll be paying you every month. During your holiday, they'll give you flight ticket to go and see your um, family or travel wherever. They'll pay for going and coming back. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's my target here. I'm not even targeting to get a job because getting a job is another thing altogether. I'm just targeting that scholarship because here, many schools, the one I'm applying to now, if you have a family, you have a full quarters. You can, your husband can join you, your kids can join you. It's like a full house. <laughs> a full house and you can be going to school. You can have your nanny or have somebody look after your kids. So here they really, really prioritize family. And then this scholarship thing, they take it really, if, you, if you're able to get in, people who have studied here, they know. If you're able to get in, every month you get paid. You get paid to be a student. Ah, Bob. If I get that scholarship, in fact, any of the scholarships is finished. The way I'll leave my husband in this Gurayata, Kuku uh, Eta School. <laughs> Even if bread not they get to read every month, just pay me a beg. <laughs> just pay me, oh, pay me. Ah, one year. So, yeah, salary. Hmm. When I came, it used to be an issue. It used to be a problem. It used to be a problem because, <clears throat> because my husband felt that, I mean, when we had our long distance um, marriage, I was getting almost. Uh, <laughs> Hey, I didn't want to use my mouth and say how much my husband was sending me when I was in Nigeria. I was living like, I wasn't even touching my salary because my husband was sending me more than enough. Then we came here, everything just off. I say, uncle, wait till they happen. Everything awful. He now, I don't know. I felt like maybe he felt like now we're all here. There's no need to be giving me money. I protested though. Hey, I, pro I say, eh? No, no, no. Every month cut me my share. <laughs> you think it's easy to be a stay-at-home mom inside Saudi Arabia? Nah. So, yeah. Last year, it was an issue. I said, nah, nah, nah. You need to cut me my, my, my own share. So, it started with a specific amount. I still wasn't satisfied. After six months, it was up for <laughs> renegotiation. <laughs> so now he's giving me a decent amount that obviously I'm not, I won't say what am I even using it for? Because every time I still want to do my nails or do whatsoever, he gives me money for that separately. But that monthly one that I want to use and be doing what I want to do with it, uh -huh, I need it. So, um, yeah finances and finances no longer but when we came here it was a huge issue for our marriage because i was like why would i be a stay-at-home mom and zero is in my account as a dependent because they say i shouldn't work so i should not have account i should not have anything no now it's not done like that you will pay me as you were paying me in nigeria to stay at home <laughs> so um yeah how has life been how has life been basically? And have you been speaking to your bestie? Life this year, I mean, if you've noticed, I've decided to take it slow. I don't know, maybe it comes with age, or maybe I don't know what is happening. Or like things I used to face me before I entered this year, everything just like, like what's the purpose of all these things? Take your time, take your time. I feel like this year, there's no i'm not craving to be seen if you see me you see me <laughs> i'm not craving to be out there i'm just i don't want to say living in the moment because that's so much of a cliche to say in 2024 i've been through a lot like being so positive being so happy that i felt like no if you're sad be sad if you're if things are not going well, don't be looking for an escape. Just don't be looking for a means of escapism to run away from. You have personal issues or you have things bothering you. 
wallow in that and feel it so you appreciate the stage where you are that's where i am now i'm not craving to be seen because a lot happened last year a lot is still happening this year that i just felt i've mentioned this in the first video i, I shared this year i felt like someone was really 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 <laughs> someone was really after me and my family you know with my mom you would think that something is slowing that another thing will pop up so i just said no 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 something something is something has to change I've been doing this for what? Six years? Seven years? Something has to change. And I don't care who I lose in the process or what I lose in the process. I'm just at that stage where I, I really don't care. I don't care to be seen. I don't care to be... I'm just focused on... You see this thing that is bringing me the small joy is giving me. Giving me the small money is giving me. Giving me the small motivation is giving me. Let me focus on those things you know and be present like the moment i did that this year the, in fact the moment i deleted everything from my instagram i don't know if i don't know if there's a correlation with that but i found i've been happier in real life than when i was really displaying showing this showing that doing like every moment of my life you know documenting Things have really changed in just three months, like in my marriage, with my kids, with my family, like the energy has been different. So like, I just want it to remain this way. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm okay with the way it is. There is no, uh, this year I'm not, I'm not fancying anything. You know, there are some things in my early twenties, my mid twenties that I would say, <sighs> these things I, I need to yes i need to attain i need to get this i need to that like this is where i'm headed this is i have to this is like whatever taking life as it comes okay this one happened okay is that what happened okay no problem we'll get through it that's the phase i'm in the next question has the university you applied to study your masters responded to you i love you so much girl the first one i applied to three universities last year one rejected me i think i've talked about it before one of the schools rejected me like big rejection unfortunately i my chest cut <laughs> because i drafted cv drafted ah i drafted unfortunately mm, my chest just cut one is yet to get back to me although the one that is yet to get back to me has gotten back to a family member i shared the link to and i'm praying that that family member makes it to the family member has passed stage one there are three stages the department will assess you the overall is it hod now what there are different stages than the interview stage so the family member I sent the link to, they've accepted him for the first stage, so remaining two stages. So if he, hmm, let me not cast it. If that family member gets it, hey, I know that this year is going to be late for me because there is nothing like having a family with you abroad. There is no, like absolutely nothing. And funny enough, funny enough, this family member studied in nigeria i remember when i talked about this thing in one of my sit down videos someone left in the comment section that oh if they can reject mama diana that studied in the uk who am i with my nigerian degree and i was telling the person apply 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 they don't do it like that life is not by you went to harvard you went to this you went. there's something called grace there's something called luck so when I share all these links for you people, like this new one I'm applying to, I'm still going to share it on my Instagram story tomorrow for people who are interested in applying for master's and PhD. Scholarship, free. You're not paying for anything. The only thing you need to pay for is your visa fee. Everything else, your relocation, they'll pay for it. You just come study. They'll be paying you every month. So the girl that commented and said, oh, me that studied in Nigeria, I don't even have hope. It's not done like that, my dear. So when I say apply, apply. No be scam. This, my family member, studied in Nigeria. Studied in Nigeria. 
did not come out with first class. It wasn't first class, but the person has passed stage one. They did not still choose me. So it's not done like that. Don't be discouraged. Don't because I said they've rejected me. It, they don't look at or there may be things that maybe a particular thing that they are looking for in your CV or your recommendation or your whatever your grades you may never know so just apply apply um yeah like i said one rejected me two are yet to get back to me i'm currently drafting my cv and resume for one the way i'm praying to get one scholarship people will not understand people will not understand if i can get a scholarship here and the scholarship here master's here is two years if I can get here, it will, it will really mean a lot. It will mean that I wouldn't pay for masters. Because if I leave the Middle East or if I leave the Saudi, it means anywhere I'm going to, I must pay for masters. That's what it means. Please let me save my money <laughs> instead of thinking of bringing out money to pay for masters again. No questions. Sending you loads of love. Fatima, I see you also on my Instagram. I see a lot of Instagram people. You'll be messaging me. You think I don't store your names in my head. I know you people know. All the consistent dynamites, always checking up. I know you people. I just finished my auxiliary nursing. How can I get a scholarship to study over there? Unfortunately, unfortunately, Kala, she was considering herself more than the kids are hobby. Considering myself for what? Waiting. What are you people debating? I just finished my auxiliary nursing. How can I get scholarship? Unfortunately, they don't give for nursing. They don't give for medicine. They don't give for specific heavy courses. But they give for, if you want to do biomedical, bio, biological science, computer science, engineering, any sort of engineering, um, Islamic studies. I saw Islamic studies. If you're a Muslim and you're interested in getting a scholarship in Islamic studies, most of the scholarships here, I see Islamic studies. Um, so yeah, there are a lot, but nursing and medicine, I haven't seen. I don't think they, they, they only give their own citizens or if you want to pay out of pocket. But scholarship, I'm not seeing them giving scholarship for nursing or medicine. How do I get enrolled in a Saudi university for master's with my Ikama, Binta? So Binta, if you're already living in Saudi and you have your Ikama, whichever university you're interested in, you just go specifically to that school's university and you try to log in. Whenever you try to log in, they'll ask you, are you a resident in Saudi Arabia? There'll be two options. If you're a resident already in Saudi Arabia, or if you're applying from outside in the scholarship portal. So you have to choose that you're already here in, in Saudi. When you now choose it, they'll now tell you to put your ECAMA number, which is your residency permit, your residence permit number. You just fill it in and then everything else that you need to fill in will pop out. So there's no serious way to get it. Just make sure that you go to the specific school. So let me say, for instance, you go on Google and you search scholarship programs in Saudi Arabia. You see a lot of websites advertising all the current scholarships. Once you go to that website, copy the name of that school, the particular school, just write it down somewhere. Open a, a fresh Google page, type in the name of that school, go to the scholarship page inside that particular school and do your application. That way they will direct you to um, the area where you can apply as someone who is already living here in Saudi. So, yeah. Why did you delete your Instagram posts? I noticed you lost a lot of weight. Could you share your journey? I deleted my Instagram post because I felt like someone was after my life. <laughs> I know it's a lame excuse. I felt like someone was after my family, was after my life. It's not just Instagram. I deleted my Twitter, just privated my Facebook. And since doing that, my dear, things have turned around. 
because I thought village people were <laughs> were only offline. They've gone digital. <laughs> Amadia has gone digital. <laughs> Don't be smart, you know. So, yeah, I I just deleted it because, yeah, I, I was in a rough space earlier this year and I felt like doing something different. So I deleted, I, I wiped it clean and it's going to remain like that for a very long time. In fact, since it's been like that, I haven't had the urge. You know this urge of, like, there's more urge now to remain anonymous than post. <laughs> So I think that's one thing that comes with always sharing your life. You get that dopamine rush, that serotonin, constantly telling you you need that validation, you need to share, you need to get the likes, you need to keep up. I mean, that slowdown phase. So I couldn't care less. I post on my Instagram story. The good thing is after 24 hours, you won't see it again. So follow me still. It shouldn't discourage you. Still follow me on Instagram. I share my when i'm homeschooling with the kids i do share sometimes when i go out i do share my life is boring there's nothing to see <laughs> there's nothing to see in my life nothing is inside that bag my life is very boring when did you start actively teaching your oldest son his reading and counting is incredible any tips um my son started school at the age of two that was in nigeria so when he started, what I used to do was, after school, I used to do videos on that. After school, we just go through all his homeworks and assignments. The school he used to go to when we were in Port Harcourt, every day they used to bombard him with assignments, every single day, weekends, holidays. So there was always something to work with. So that was when I started buying a few things. Some of the things I, I also brought them here, um, I brought them to Saudi. Um, I bought some placards of sounds and letters and whatnot. That was when I started it. I started with alphabets. We did A to Z. And then I started linking each alphabet to a sound. So A, A, B, B. I made sure he perfected that stage before we now started with one syllable words. From one syllable words, my mom came. When my mom came, I don't know how she did it. It was easier for him now to now pick up and he started reading so um yeah just effort i think effort goes a long way just make the effort make the time i feel like these kids the do more when they see that you're involved if they see that you don't care they won't care if they see that every time they do something or you're working with them and you applaud them you validate them you tell them you're doing well well done or more, they'll even want to be impressing you. They'll want to be doing more to show you that they are doing better. So it's just effort. I know it's difficult, especially if you're a working mom or if you're a stay-at-home mom with other kids. It can get really, really difficult. But then it's doable. Even if you give your kids 10, 15 minutes a day, it, it makes a whole lot of difference. A whole lot. But yeah, that is that for the Q and A. It is 5, 16 am here i don't know if you guys can hear the call to prayers it's currently ramadan season here so 5 a.m they start calling for prayers so um yeah ask me whatsoever questions you have before i leave this live ask me anything else you'd love to know i feel like i've answered at least 80 percent of all the questions that were sent so ask me before we leave before i go my husband will soon be back from work. <laughs> like I said, the reason why I couldn't do a sit-down video, for those of you who joined late, this is what my camera did this morning. So before I post another sit-down video, it's going to be a long time. So my camera has officially broken down. So this used to be the display for my camera. And I could see, I could see myself here as I'm recording, but now it's useless. So I'm just frustrated. I don't even know at this point. I don't know. The only thing you should be expecting from this channel now is vlogs, vlogs, vlogs. All the sit down videos I planned, I can't do them anymore. At least until 
my husband probably gets a new camera for me, which I don't know when it will be. But then, yeah. So, you're just going to be getting vlogs, vlogs, vlogs. How were you able to conceive your boys? Did you plan it? Any tips? Yes, I planned for my two boys. Um, for me, my ovulation is usually 28, uh, being my menstruation cycle. So the beginning of my menstruation to the beginning of another one is usually 28, 29 days. Yeah? So usually for me, on the 10th or 11th day, I ovulate. So for baby boys, let me tell you what I know. This is not medical advice. This, go and research and do your personal research. Consult with your gynecologist. Consult with your obstetrician. This is just what worked for me. So you can download an app called FLO. It's called Flow App. A lot of women use this app. Once you download that app, you start timing your menstrual cycle. So the beginning of one cycle to the beginning of another. Once you're able to know how many days you have in between these two periods. So if it's 28, 29, 30, you know. Uh, 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 uh. How do I put this without bargaining? <laughs> if you know, you know, let me say it six times out of the whole year in a whole year or in a period of six months, you count it and it's stable, 28 days, 28 days, 28 days, you know that your cycle is 28. If you count it and it's 29, you know that your cycle is 29. So once that is established, the app can easily generate your ovulation day for you. So the app will tell you the day that you would ovulate. What is ovulation? Ovulation is when your egg is available for sperm to enter and fertilize it for it to form a zygote and go on to form a baby. Now we're entering science, okay? So if you're not really sure if the app is accurate, you can know from your own body. After your menstruation, the days after, just be checking your vagina, the day that you see a lot more mucor, or a lot more discharge, or if you put your hand in your cervix, like inside your cervix, to know when, <laughs> please, this is what worked for me, to know when your cervix feels, I don't know how to explain it. It doesn't feel hard, it just feels soft. <laughs> this is TMI, yo. someone said this is TMI. This is TMI. So, but the app accurately tells you with your cycle the day that you're likely to ovulate. So for you to know if that's really the day you ovulate, the day that the app tells you, just check. Check your pint. Check if you can see more discharge. Check if you can feel your cervix. If it feels softer, you put your hand inside your vagina. You feel your cervix. See how it feels. It will feel different from the different days that you're not ovulating. So once that is established, because baby boys, <laughs> baby boys, baby girls, they are determined by men, contrary to what you may know. So for the male sperm, the male sperm is usually weaker than the female sperm. We're entering teaching now. <laughs> so they don't really last as long as women's, I've uh, been a baby girl sperm spermatozoa that's what is coming out from your husband's penis okay so if you have sex five days or four days or three days before your ovulation date the likelihood of you having a baby girl is high why because if you have sex five days before your ovulation day Female uh, uh, spermatozoas, they can live longer because they swim slower. But male spermatozoa, they live shorter and they swim faster. They don't last in the cervix. I don't know why the biology is that way. So you need to work with timing. So if you want a baby boy, you must have sex around that ovulation day. Whether it's 24 hours before or on the day pre preferably on the day you're ovulating. 
you have sex at least morning, afternoon, night that day or the day after. That is when you have the highest chance of getting a baby boy. If you're trying for a baby girl, most people have sex days before because the, the female spermatozoa, they last longer, but they swim very slowly. So before they can get to the egg, it can take five days, four days, three days before they get to the egg. But if you have sex on that ovulation day, gong gong, the, the likelihood of it being a baby boy is very high because the male sperm swims very fast, faster than the female sperm. So, this weirdo, please, we don't need negative vibes here, please. So that's, um, yeah, that's, that's how it worked for me. That was what I did. This is not medical advice, like I said. This is what worked for me. The two times we did it, that was how it worked. We didn't have sex until my ovulation day. And after my ovulation day, I didn't bother. It must be that day. We did it morning, afternoon, night, and it ended up being a boy. So, yeah. Any other thing, any other thing you would like to ask? What's something you miss about Nigeria besides your family? I miss my food, though. I miss my food. I miss my food. I miss my food. I miss... <sighs> I miss having support. <laughs> I miss having people around my house. If you guys knew me, you, you know that every minute I need people. Every weekend, my, my brothers used to come. My cousins, after work, I'll tell them, come. I miss having people around me. I had nannies, two nannies. I had support. I miss that support, that support system. I miss it. Um, yeah. Just great. It's not that deep. Someone asked the question, you guys are vexing. You pull not, you pull not vex for the person asking for asking about the question. Why are you people acting like this same process I just explained is not what brought all of us to life? Eh? Holy adult people. I be people who I don't know. Is this not what brought me and you to life? How do you think you came about? <laughs> this is the biology of how it worked. <laughs> I also miss the proper night. Definitely, definitely, de definitely such a big fan. Please, I'm a community health care. Please, is there any way for me to work as a caregiver or home care or assistant nurse? There are ways. There are ways to work here as carers. I don't know the pathways. I don't have any information on that. But I've seen a lot of Filipino carers here. I've seen a lot of... Um, Bangladeshi Indians working here as carers. But yeah, you just have to find out. I don't think they need most jobs here need you need an agent. Most jobs here. So it's just to source out an agent that will help you. But like I said, if you're here, if you were here when I started this life, someone asked this same question and I was like, it's best you come here as a professional. If you're a nurse, a doctor, or whatsoever. The chances of you enjoying Saudi or you giving that utmost respect <laughs> is high. If you want to be a caregiver, the chances of you living like a king is higher in the UK or even in any Western economy than here. So before you come here as a caregiver, just think. Think. Find out if there is anybody who you know from here that has done it. Tell them to tell you the truth about working as a caregiver here. Get as much information as you can. Don't be deceived by anything. Have everything. Have all your information. People that will tell you the truth and not lie to you before coming. But personally, I would come here as a nurse or a med lab scientist or a doctor or an engineer. Anything below professional jobs. I'm sorry, I can't stay in Saudi. Oh, uh, Okazi soup is what I miss. Me too. I met Okazi here. 
any more questions before we wrap it up? Because I feel like I've answered a whole lot. It seems that there is a lot of BOT on YouTube, quite off potential. Allow them. <laughs> Allow them. They're helping to stream the to, to stream the video. They help with the algorithm. So let them keep being bots. Pray for me. I want your maturity. <laughs> You think I'm mature? <laughs> I don't take myself seriously sometimes. So. Now, who they take things seriously be mature. If you learn to not take things seriously, a lot of things, you just be detached. A lot of things won't face you. So I guess that's what was maturity to you. I don't know. My sister will be... Dalo, your advice on your live channel, Dalo. You are welcome. Any more questions before I I move? Guys, before I wrap it up, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you, thank you. I would have to leave very soon because it's five, it's 5 30 here now. So um, yeah, like I said, my camera has been destroyed beyond repair so all the sit down videos i scheduled for this month and the the podcast i was intending on filming the podcast with this um camera but then now that this has happened everything would be postponed so bear with me with the vlogs the vlogs are not easy to film so um yeah it may not be frequent but whenever you see a vlog please show love show love um until when my camera can be sorted before i can think of anything else please you know any truth agent that can help someone out um if you need an agent for visa i have but agent for any other thing i i don't know i'm clueless i'm just a dependent remember my husband came before me so i don't know who he used who helped him I don't know anything about agents helping, but if you need anything else, maybe visa, my mom's visa, the agents that did for her, he really, really helped. Within days, her visa was out. So if you need that, you can email me and I'll send you the agent's number. But everything else, I don't know how you can source for that. Have an enjoyable weekend, Dinah and everyone. I know the weekend is Friday and Saturday in Arab countries. Yes. Thank you so much. Pleasant greetings. Thank you for the support of my YouTube channel. Everywhere I go, you support. Thank you so much. I appreciate. My little brother got hit by... Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry, Brian. I hope he gets well soon. What, when is your next live and how can I be a guest on your podcast? Um, Jonathan, if you have me on Instagram, you can message me or you can email me and then I'll add it to the list. So anytime you're ready, we can talk about anything because I know you've been meaning to talk about something. So yeah, that one would be hot. <laughs> that one would be hot. So definitely, please, if you can, um, my email is dynavlogs, is in the description area of all my videos. You can leave me an email or you can message me on Instagram and yeah, I can add you and would have something ready because this podcast, if the season one does well, definitely would have loads and loads of seasons. What I planned was that I would, I wanted to start off this month and then end the first season july but with this whole camera issue i don't know i don't know again are you married it's like we have new people here we have new people here so anyway no one has any more question i don't know what we have here now are people who are not happy for this life anyway thank you so much for tuning in um 
live videos if there's any important updates i had to do this q a via live because of this whole camera issue but hopefully you absolutely enjoyed it please give it a massive thumbs up subscribe let me know anything you disagree with i would love to know in the comments because i know i triggered a lot of people during the life although i wasn't reading i didn't have the i didn't have the time to read comments i know a few people called me selfish for something i don't know what it is but i'm in my selfish season maybe you met me in my selfish season all my selfless season you've not been there <laughs> my whole 20s i've been selfless yeah so if you say i'm selfish i claim it with my i claim it with my with my full chest i'm in my selfish season for five six years i've been selfless yeah selfless now woman i be i don't cookie anybody yeah so let me enjoy small this selfish phase be happy for me be be happy for me because sincerely where we're going the future the way the future is looking you just have to be selfish to get a lot of things even being selfish is not beneficial for just me alone it's still for the kids if i say i'm trying to get my masters my masters will i get it and keep the money for myself and to myself it's still for the benefit of the family anything i'm doing whether you see it as a selfish adventure or a personal whatsoever it's for the future my husband that is doing all he's doing in fact if you if you live a day in the life real day not the one i edit and put on youtube if you come into this house you would call my husband the selfish one you say why is it that you go to work all week you don't see your kids you don't do this you're always reading you're always doing. you would probably call my husband the selfish one but who are the people benefiting from his selfishness it's us because his selfishness is paying the bills his selfishness is making sure that we're doing fine people back home are okay a lot of things are settled so if a husband or a wife decides to be selfish in a marriage it's, it's still for the family unit so let me be selfish in this phase yeah it's allowed it's okay all right um are you okay now concerning the candida issue my dear sister this iud is after my life <laughs> even after removing it there's an update coming thank god it's a vlog thank god i didn't use my camera to film it I already went to the hospital two days ago. Hmm. It, I have an update, so please don't miss that vlog. This IUD is after my life, even after taking it out. Since January, I took out that IUD. I have an update video coming. I'm still battling things that I'm going to share. In my next life, if I see IUD, I'll be wrong. <laughs> um, the kingdom does not support what you're doing sorry which kingdom the kingdom of saudi or god's kingdom which one take care of yourself and your family diner my love may god bless you Mwah. maybe it's the lighting you had better makeup on your youtube but you still look beautiful anyway thank you guys so much for tuning in thank you thank you thank you i think everyone is exhausted now any more questions you have leave it in the comments and i will answer hopefully i see you guys in my next video for now bye bye